Happy New Year to all of our travel advisors. Happy New Year and best wishes for a much healthier, more prosperous, and much happier year in 2021. Of course, being better than 2020 is a very low bar, but I'd like to tell you why I believe we'll be so much better off than that. Indeed, why I believe 2021 will end up as a very good year for us all. I know it started out in a terrible way. COVID-19 has reached new heights in the U.S., with daily new case counts topping 250,000 and daily fatalities approaching 4,000. Europe, too, was boasting of its own low numbers until the figures there started to spike in November. And now Europe is reimposing its own restrictions everywhere. At the same time, the horrific attacks on our Capitol building sent tremors throughout our country and across the globe. We were all outraged and saddened by the inexcusable acts of desecration on one of our most valued institutions and the democracy that it represents. But fortunately, our institutions did respond and democracy does move on, and that is another part of our strength. Now, I know many of you have struggled through the last year. Your businesses have been devastated. Some of you have lost close friends and family members to the deadly pandemic. And beyond our personal challenges, our country has become divided in dangerous ways. Against this background, it's not hard finding things to be negative about. It's easy to wring our collective hands and allow despair to rule our lives. But I know that the sun is still shining behind those clouds. That sun is bright and it will soon shine through. A key driver of our recovery is the magic of science. I continue to find it amazing that only 10 months after COVID-19 began to ravage our country, scientists and medical researchers have developed multiple vaccines that will help us gain control over the disease. I fear that we take such miracles for granted, but this is truly a towering achievement. We should recognize it for the wonder that it represents. I know the rollout of the vaccines has been slower than we hoped, but it's still been amazing. In the United States, about 4% of the population has already been vaccinated. This week, we reached a peak of 1 million vaccinations in a single day. 1 million in a day. It's amazing. This puts the U.S. in a leading position in the world. Canada has vaccinated a little over 1% of its population. Continental Europe has also vaccinated just over 1%. In fact, there are only a few places on Earth that have a higher proportion vaccinated than the United States. For example, Israel has been amazingly successful in vaccinating large proportions of its population. And the UK is slightly higher than the US. But by far around the world, the United States has been unusually successful in getting vaccines in arms. I think there is a reminder here of a lesson that we all know, but sometimes forget. Something that start up is very hard and it never goes as expected. It's easy to point out the mistakes that somebody else has made in trying to do something new. I've learned this on every ship we've ever delivered. Starting things up requires time, practice, and the humility to acknowledge that no matter how much experience we have, there will always be glitches. Despite these inevitable glitches, our ships are able to deliver the best experiences in the world. The rollout of these vaccines has been bumpy, but they're now getting into their stride and that augurs well for our future. But with infections at an all time high, how is it that we can be so optimistic? How is it that we can be so hopeful when we're inundated with terrible news every day? The answer is simple. We're watching the numbers. A key source for data is a group called the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. IHME is part of the University of Washington and supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It really needs a good marketing person to help them choose a better name for themselves. They're not too good at that. But they are one of the best known and the best respected sources of data and projections in this field. Their predictions, which I'm showing here, are that infections and fatalities will peak at the end of January and then start to fall rapidly from there. They point out that 22% of the US population has already had the virus and is now largely immune from reinfection. They then factor in vaccines, 
mask usage, and other factors to prepare the epidemiological curve. Now, on this graph, the heavy purple line shows the big surge over the last two months. But it also shows that their prediction of a dramatic decline starting shortly and continuing to plummet over the next three months. It's going to take a while for the numbers to fall to very low levels, but the numbers come down quickly. They project that by the end of April, we can expect levels 20 times lower than today's peak, and the lowest they've been since early last year. As always, there are unknowns, and IHME shows various scenarios. For example, as is common with such viruses, there have been many mutations of the virus which may impact these figures. Similarly, they point out that a faster vaccine rollout could add as much as 10% to the total numbers that are vaccinated by April and thereby reduce transmission even more quickly. It's important to point out that these are projections of the future and aren't inconsistent with the disastrous figures that we see every day in the news. I compare this to reporting during a hurricane, which we in Florida know a lot about. The TV rightly shows the winds howling and the trees bending during the storm, and it is horrific. But we also look at the projections to see where the storm will be a little later on. It takes some pretty sophisticated modeling and a lot of experience, but we can get a good indication of the path of the storm. Not perfect, but pretty good. And I think the COVID tempest is similar. We're in the midst of the worst part of the storm, and it is horrific. But we need to consider the likely direction over the next few months, and that's why I'm so positive. So given a likely rapid decline in the spread of COVID, what can we do to prepare? Well, first of all, we have to survive. At the Royal Caribbean Group, we've taken a number of steps to reinforce our own financial strength. And because the success of the travel advisor community is so important to our success, we have also taken steps to help you all. Most recently, we announced a program to grant interest-free loans to travel advisors as part of our RCL CARES initiative. We will be shortly announcing more details of that program, along with ways you can access government support. Finally, we are approaching the point where we can run out the clock on this terrible disease. In these videos, I've quoted philosophers from people as diverse as Churchill and Sun Tzu. Now I'll quote somebody with a slightly less erudite background, Bruce Lee. He said, patience is not passivity. It is concentrated strength. So be patient. Don't be passive. Plan. Prepare. And know that we will all come back stronger. And don't forget, wash your hands and keep wearing your mask. The clock is running down. Oh,